Episode 31, The Evil Angel's Dastardly Plan, Part 2. Vod's private dimension trembles, while the angel himself also lets some involuntary tremors pass through his body. The person responsible for this is Gohan, who releases his energy with great intensity while showing his beast form. His power is extraordinary, causing even that particular dimension of an angel to suffer several anomalies in its ecosystem thanks to the Saiyan's bestial power. I can't believe this bastard had so much power, the evil angel thinks, letting his surprise clearly appear on his face. Even knowing that Gohan is the son of the mighty Vegito, Vod had no idea that someone so young could have such high power. He clearly shows his astonishment through his expressions as he gapes at Gohan. Gohan stares at the enemy, looking straight into his eyes. The Saiyan warrior's eyes demonstrate seriousness, concentration, and above all, confidence in his victory. He finally calls his opponent to his point. Come on, Angel, let's see who will feel true despair. Vod, who was previously cornered by surprise, now gets very angry and tells Gohan that despite having surprised him with its power, it's better not to think that he already won just because of that. The able angel moves toward the Saiyan with a powerful start, leaving a large trail of destruction across the ground whenever he passes due to the incredible power with which he moves. Gohan does no less than that, also going against his enemy, destroying the ground wherever he goes. The two, surrounded by a powerful aura of ki, go at each other with overwhelming force. When the collision happens, an explosion of energy devastates a large region of that dimension, causing destruction that reaches a radius of countless kilometers away. Bod and Gohan remain at the center of this entire zone of destruction. One tries to overcome the other's power in a contest of strength, while they exude a powerful energy that spreads throughout the surroundings. This boy is very strong. It doesn't even compare to how he was months ago. Vod recognizes feeling all the strength that Gohan has recently acquired with this transformation. But then the angel gets angry and shouts at the Saiyan, You brat, don't think you're going to pressure me. Vod increases the intensity of his key. Gohan does the same in response. An explosion even bigger than the first happens. The two then end the contest of strength by starting to rise toward the sky in spiral movements, as if they were a tornado of power. As soon as they ascend to the skies, the two exchange powerful blows, filling the sky of that dimension with several explosions of impact and energy. To his complete shock, Vod is being pressured by Gohan, who delivers very powerful and incessant blows to him. As he is increasingly pressured by the Saiyan, Vod thinks, in addition to having great speed, strength, and good fighting techniques, this bastard is also very insistent. Gohan, while continuing to attack the angel, says, You know, because my father has this ability, I know some things about Ultra Instinct. I know that this ability grants the user a very high attack, defense, and dodging capacity. But I also know that in exchange for this, the user must keep their mind and body in calm and harmony. But that doesn't seem to be the case with you. You seem like a very stressed guy. Vod doesn't like those insinuations. Stop beating around the bush and say what you want to say. 
Gohan then explains better what he means. What I mean is that you probably have a very unrefined Ultra Instinct compared to the other angels. That's because you're completely unbalanced. My father's Ultra Instinct is so much better than yours. You wouldn't stand a chance against him. You insolent brat. Vod interrupts Gohan's speech in an outburst as he suddenly attempts a rage-filled attack. But Gohan predicts his movement and lands a precise blow on the angel, delivering a very powerful kick to his abdomen. A blow strong enough to make Vod flinch in pain. Then Gohan smiles as he thinks, I already know how to beat this guy. While the son fights in Vod's dimension, the father fights in an uninhabited planet. Vegito and his clone cross the skies of that planet while competing with intense blows, firing thousands of punches and kicks per second, as well as several energy attacks that create a true show of lights and explosions across the sky. The pressure exerted on the planet is great, to the point that the entire ground is full of craters and cracks, indicating that it won't be long before the entire planet gives way and is completely destroyed. The more he fights against his clone, the more the real Vegeta realizes that the clone's movements are very similar to his own, which leaves him intrigued and thoughtful. His movements are exactly like mine. How could such a perfect copy of me have been created? Vegito's distraction costs him a blow, which when it hits him, launches him against a block of stone, which is destroyed by the force of the fall. But Vegito doesn't stay buried in the rocks for long as he destroys everything around him with his energy. Despite everything, he smiles and says that this clone is indeed a challenging opponent, which makes everything much more fun. But Vegito's smile fades and his expression takes on a more serious tone when he begins to think about his son, Gohan, whose key disappeared from this reality very suddenly. He wonders what's behind this when he says to his clone while starting to raise his key, Look, it's fun to fight someone who mirrors me, but unfortunately, I don't have much time right now. I'm going to finish you off quickly and find out what's going on. The power of destruction is released by Vegito in the form of a tenebrous aura of energy. Then a completely opposite energy appears, transmitting all the calm and serenity of Ultra Instinct. Now balancing the powers of Ultra Ego and Ultra Instinct, Vegito tells his clone that this fight is over. Vegito fires a majestic wave of power at his copy, who immediately retaliates with a powerful wave of energy. However, the wave of power fired by the clone is nothing compared to the destructive power of the original Vegito, who consumes his clone's attacks with ease and continues heading towards him. When the copy is achieved by Vegito's energy, a titanic explosion happens in the sky, reverberating throughout that planet and taking its entire structure to the limit. Vegito smiles, confident of his victory after the attack. However, his smile is shattered when he contemplates his perfectly alive clone. And that's not all. Now he also uses the same transformation as Vegito, balancing the power of Ultra Instinct and Ultra Ego. It cannot be. This bastard can transform like me too? Vegito sighs with impatience. Gogeta and Fricolo are in the middle of a very curious exchange of blows. The two keep a reasonably large distance from each other, but they still exchange punches. They do this by stretching their arms, throwing distance punches at each other that are as strong as they are fast. Their arms look like simple figures, but they carry such great power that they cause several impact explosions to spread around them, creating several whirlpools and earthquakes on the planet they are on. Although the exchange of blows seems balanced, the truth is that Fricolo is at a total disadvantage. Being under a lot of pressure from Gogeta, and no longer able to maintain this exchange of punches, he decides to change his strategy and launch a large energy attack against Gogeta. However, Gogeta escapes the energy attack with a teleportation, and stopping above Fricolo, hits a top-down kick that sends him crashing to the ground with great violence. Fricolo ends up falling upside down on the ground with his head sticking into the ground and his body hanging like a nail. Gogeta lands next to him and realizing that the enemy is completely inert, wonders if he exaggerated. But suddenly, Fricolo's head comes out from under the ground behind Gogeta, firing a key blast from his mouth. Gogeta immediately notices and dodges. Then he makes a cutting movement with his hand horizontally in the air, and the pressure of this movement hits Fricolo's outstretched neck, cutting off his head. But before Fricolo's head even hits the ground, an entire body appears beneath it. Good regeneration. The Saiyan praises while he can't hide his smile of amusement. You did not see anything. The opponent responds also smiling. Fricolo concentrates his energy causing several anomalies on that planet. Then his power manifests itself in an incredible pillar of energy. An incredibly dense energy which shows a high degree of power. Now Fricolo shows a transformation that has multiplied his power to extraordinary levels. He announces the name of this form, shouting proud of his colossal power. Contemplate the beige Fricolo. But Gogeta doesn't see it with excitement, but rather disappointment. Dude, beige, 
I can't think of a color more tacky than this. It seems like the color palette for transformations is getting really limited now. The Saiyan complains. You bastard. What matters is my power. Color is the least important thing. The beige warrior screams. Really? So why the color define the transformation name? Gogeta retorts. Furious, Fricolo prepares to attack, saying he won't waste time with this ridiculous discussion. Gohan and Vod make that entire dimension shake with their blows, generating countless waves of impact around them at the same time that they are surrounded by intense electrical blasts, resulting from the collision of their attacks, highly energized by enormous power. The two release a large amount of key as they fight, making the entire atmosphere of that place extremely dense. They cover the skies and the ground while flying at incredible speed, leaving several energy explosions in their wake. Gohan fights with determination, letting all the ferocity of his bestial form overflow through his attacks. Vod, on the other hand, despite being pressured, tries not to back down, determined not to let the Saiyan Brat stand out against him. There's no way I'm being pressured by this worm. I will not allow that to happen, the angel thinks. While continuing to pressure his enemy, Gohan says, You seem like a very proud guy, and it must be a tragedy for someone like you to be pressured like that by someone like me, right? This must really hinder you in keeping your ultra instinct working well. Vod shouts, telling Gohan to shut up, and tries an attack again. But he's hit again with an attack that is as precise Precise as it is strong, which causes the angel great pain. With the enemy completely stunned by his last move, Gohan sees an opportunity, concentrating a large amount of his energy. He shouts, Kamehameha! A gigantic wave of power completely engulfs Vod. However, suddenly all this energy is dispersed when a key explosion spreads across that place. It's the angel's key, which is more powerful and intense than ever. What is that? Gohan exclaims in shock. Vod's power is so intense that it burns his own skin. And combined with the furious expression on his face, it gives the angel a demonic and frightening appearance. You bastard. Who do you think you're dealing with? I am Vod, the 15th son of Daishinken, and I will not be defeated by a brat. Gohan immediately notices that Vod's power has increased enormously. It cannot be. I didn't imagine this guy could increase his power so much. With an incomparably greater speed, Vod advances against Gohan in a way that even in his bestial form, the Saiyan cannot react, grabbing him by the face and throwing him headfirst against the ground in a way that Gohan completely cracks, even the extremely rigid ground, rigid from that angel's dimension. Then, Vod throws Gohan away, leaving the Saiyan to travel a great distance while creating a line of destruction on the ground. After that, Vod rises to the sky and forms a small sphere of energy in his hand that he launches against the area where Gohan stopped. And even that small sphere where it hits the ground sets off a gigantic explosion. But at the last moment, Gohan managed to escape thanks to the Galactic Patrol's teleportation device, instantly arriving in front of Vod with his fist covered in power and throwing a punch with all his strength against the angel. However, to the Saiyan's misfortune, Vod doesn't even move, making it seem like a simple stone hit a large, impassable mountain. It cannot be! Gohan despairs. Gogeta and Frikolo's fight resumes in full swing. Now using his beige form, Frikolo achieved an absurd increase in strength, speed, resistance, and raw power, taking the fight against Gogeta to a much higher level. Despite the notable increase in his opponent's power, Gogeta remains on par with him, even without transforming. This greatly frustrates Frikolo, who really thought he would take the reins of that battle after transforming. In an attempt to scare Gogeta, Frikolo fires an energy attack at him that contains completely extraordinary power. However, Gogeta responds with an equally powerful attack. The clash of these two attacks results in a gigantic explosion of power, which completely destroys the planet they are on. But the destruction of a mere planet for these beings of colossal power is nothing. Gogeta and Frikolo engage in frantic movement, traveling astronomical distances through space while clashing their bodies with a titanic force that causes gigantic shockwaves that shake the structure of multiple solar systems. Cosmic disasters occur as the fight unfolds. Stars go into atomic imbalance and explode. Planets are affected by shockwaves and experience experience fatal natural disasters, and even dimensional barriers weaken. The collisions against Gogeta's body are not good for Frikolo's body, which is severely injured. But using Frikolo's regenerative abilities, he can always regenerate his external and internal injuries. And fueled by Frieza's bloodlust, he continues to attack with voracious determination. Gogeta hits Frikolo with a very powerful wave of energy, which launches him a galaxy away, only stopping when he collides with a very resistant planet. After receiving this attack, 
Piccolo becomes extremely angry. And when Gogeta arrives at him with a teleport, he says that the Saiyan is a bastard. Piccolo raises his hand to form a gigantic supernova, and after launching this attack against Gogeta, he warns, this attack has enough power to destroy an entire ordinary universe. Piccolo states, vain of his own power. However, Gogeta responds unimpressed. Sorry, but for me, it's still not a big deal. Forming a small amount of energy of destruction in his hand, Gogeta launches it against Frikolo's attack, who completely disappears from existence in the same second. It cannot be. Frikolo is amazed. Even though Vod and Gohan are in another dimension, Gogeta feels the gigantic energy of the angel who has just greatly increased his power and become a little worried. Vegito continues the battle against his clone, which becomes increasingly intense. He's very impressed with the power of his copy and wonders how someone managed to copy his power like that, until finally Vegito seems to reason and find an answer. At that moment, Vegito moves away from his clone and after concentrating, he fires an energy attack in a direction that doesn't seem to have anything, but his energy is defended by some Someone who was invisible there. The person who was hiding, watching everything was Vados, who while revealing herself, asks Vegito how he discovered her. Vegito says that now he stops to think about it. The level of power this clone is using is very similar to the level of power he used in the fight against her, and since he knows that angels have incredible abilities, he imagined that Vados might be able to simulate his power in a clone. However, she would have to be close by to be able to manipulate such a powerful puppet. After Vegito explains this, Vados lets out a smile and says that he is really very smart. She shows her staff and says, After you destroyed my old staff, my father created a new one for me. Using the magical powers of the staff, I managed to transfer my own energy to this clone, but making it look like your energy. Vegito tells her that, as she herself was unable to overcome the level of power he used in the other fight, this clone is not as strong as he was in that fight. So if there is no prospect of victory for her now, Vegito asks what Vados' objective is with all of this. If I revealed my plans like that, it wouldn't be any fun, would it? Suddenly, Gogeta's voice calls out to Vegito inside his mind. Hey, Vegito, Gohan is in trouble, he says. Vegito asks how Gogeta knows this, and he explains that it's been a while since he was able to sense where Gohan had gone, and that he had fallen into an angel's trap. However, he wasn't that worried because he had sensed in Gohan the necessary potential to face the angel, but now this angel has increased his power a lot, and Gohan is in trouble. Vegito tells Gogeta that he should have said all this before. After talking to Gogeta, Vegito tells Vados that he already knows what she's planning, and says that this won't work, and that they won't be able to catch Gohan. Vados is surprised that he discovered everything so suddenly, and asks him how he did it. I don't have time to chatter with you. I'm going to destroy both you and this damn copy at once, and then I'm going to help Gohan. Vados laughs when Vegito says this, and retorts saying that despite not having his full power, his clone will not be defeated that easily. But this time it's Vegito who has the last laugh, and responds by saying that all he needs to do is increase his power even more. At that moment, Vegito begins to concentrate his energy, and the power that begins to leave his body is completely frightening. Vados looks at him in disbelief, recognizing that the power he is releasing now is much greater than what he used in the fight against her. How could you have become so much stronger in such a short time? She asks, her voice filled with fear. The answer to that is very simple, Vegito says, smiling with extreme pride in himself. My power hasn't grown since her fight. I simply didn't use my full strength against you at that time. Vados receives this response as she feels her entire body freeze from the inside, making it seem like even her heart has stopped beating. The only thing she can do is, in an act of despair, order the clone to attack. But when the clone approaches Vegito, he is quickly eliminated with a very powerful shot of power from the Saiyan, which easily makes his copy disappear completely. It cannot be! How was he destroyed so easily? Vados asks, stuttering. Now looking at her, Vegito responds, the same way you will be in a few seconds. But Vados doesn't wait for the promise to be fulfilled. And then with her voice full of bitterness, she promises, This isn't over yet, Vegito. I swear I will destroy you. After this promise, she disappears. Vegito wastes no time and immediately teleports. Damn you, Gogeta. I will destroy you. Frikolo roars, his voice bathed in fury. The reason for his fury is that even after trying so many attacks on the Saiyan, all of his attempts are frustrated in some way. Concentrating a high amount of energy in his fist, Frikolo attacks Gogeta with a punch containing all his strength. But when this blow reaches him, Gogeta surprises him by dissolving in the form of smoke. And after floating to Frikolo's back, he recovers. What kind of skill is this? He asks, impressed. Well, I saw that monster use it against Gohan, and I liked it. Gogeta responds, referring to Hiro de Garn when he fought Gohan. There's another ability of his that I saw and liked. Gogeta spits a fireball at Frikolo, who starts to be set on fire and screams wildly as he writhes in pain. 
Even with the successful attack, Gogeta is dissatisfied. Hmm, that burnt lizard smell doesn't please me at all. I'll figure it out. Gogeta quickly solves this problem, filling his lungs with air and blowing so hard that it disperses the flames that consume Freakolo. However, Gogeta exaggerates the strength of this breath, and along with the flames, it also leaves Freakolo's body his own skin. Looking at his skinless opponent, Gogeta doesn't like what he sees either. Man, you just got uglier. He points his hand at Freakolo and then he is instantly healed. After that, Freakolo stands still for a moment, his body shaking as he feels the deepest hatred and despair. You damn insect, how dare you humiliate me like this? Freakolo touches his index and middle fingers to his forehead, quickly building up a very high amount of energy. Gogeta immediately recognizes the technique. It looks like you're going to use Makan Kosapo again. Last time, you managed to make a very powerful attack, even though you barely concentrated energy. I wonder what you'll be capable of now that you're accumulating power. In an attempt to provoke Gogeta, Frikolo says, You have so much confidence in your own power, right? If you are so brave and powerful, take this attack head on. I dare you. Starting to raise his key to increase his resistance, Gogeta decides to accept Frikolo's challenge and guarantees that he won't move. Frikolo then fires his extremely powerful Makan Kasapo. The attack hits Gogeta squarely, however, despite the extremely high amount of concentrated power, it does not cause any apparent damage to Gogeta. It's not possible, Frikolo screams in disbelief. The energy I just fired had enough power to pierce a body with a mass greater than half of this universe. Wow, that's equivalent to at least nine universes from my home reality, Gogeta compares. However, for Gogeta, it is nothing, so he sarcastically comforts his opponent while boasting, Don't be sad, that was a really powerful attack. The problem is that I'm too strong. Suddenly, they are interrupted when Vegito appears at Gogeta's side with an instant transmission. Hey, where's Gohan? The one who just arrived asks. The angel took him to a particular dimension, Gogeta tells. Vegito remembers that when Whis trapped him in another dimension, Gogeta was able to return with a teleport. And so he asks if Gogeta can do something similar and take them to that dimension where Gohan is. Of course, yes, my teleportation technique is very refined thanks to Shinken, as is my ability to sense key. I can take us there in a jiffy. But Frikolo doesn't like that at all, and tells Gogeta not to treat him like he's trash by ignoring him like that. Don't get involved, you worm, Vegito screams. Vegito fires a powerful shot of highly concentrated energy that, when it hits Frikolo, instantly eliminates the strange warrior, who disappears without a trace during the explosion. Hey, I was trying to have some fun with him, Gogeta complains. Don't be ridiculous, you could kill that bug at any time. We don't have time to waste on weaklings. Take me to Gohan at once. Gogeta sighs and then agrees. Vod lifts Gohan with just one of his arms, holding him tightly by the neck. Out of breath, Gohan struggles in a futile attempt to escape the angel's hand, who smiles with excitement as he feels the hybrid Saiyan's neck being crushed. It's over, son of Vegito. Your death has finally arrived. At that moment, Gogeta and Vegito appear. When he sees them, Vod concludes that Vados and her servant have failed, and then curses the situation. When he takes a good look at the situation, Vegito sighs with relief and says, Oh man, I was thinking things were out of control. It seems like you were a little overboard, my friend friend, Gogeta. Obviously, this surprises Gogeta and also Vod. What do you mean? He's tearing Gohan apart. Gogeta retorts. Addressing his son, Vegito says, Gohan, did you make your father need to come here for something like that? Hurry up and destroy this angel at once. After Vegito says this, Vod and Gogeta are very surprised. And in the case of Vod, in addition to the surprise, there is great anger too. What are you saying, Vegito? Are you suggesting that this barely out of diapers rat can defeat me? Showing complete confidence in what he is saying, Vegito reaffirms of course I do. Your power is even lower than Vados. I'm sure Gohan can defeat you. Vod doesn't believe what he's hearing and then responds. You're just bluffing. I don't believe what you're saying. If you don't intend to intervene, fine. I will snap your son's neck and then yours. However, Vegito's confident expression doesn't change at all. And then he responds, If you don't believe my words, then take a look at what's before you. Vod does as he says and looks at Gohan. And when he does, he notices something he hadn't noticed before. Gohan's look has completely changed. With a much more ferocious look full of bloodlust, the Saiyan looks at the angel holding him, and then an attack comes, a slashing motion that severs Vod's hand. What does that mean? The angel screams in despair as he realizes that his hand was detached from his body. Gohan, now free, emits a terrifying scream, making that dimension vibrate while causing colossal level energy to emerge from his body. What abyssal power is this? Vod screams in shock and terror as he holds the severed area of his arm and watches Gohan's form change. Now sporting a new transformation and a completely savage bestial personality, Gohan roars as he stares down his opponent with a thirst for blood. Gogeta looks at it completely impressed and says that he had never seen Gohan use a similar power. 
Vegito starts to tell him that once, in one of the many training sessions he and Gohan had, his son showed this power that even he couldn't believe when he saw it. Gohan has gigantic potential to gain power, and also a monstrous rage that his gentle personality has always struggled to keep under control. But when he's pushed to his limit, his consciousness can fade, and then all his primitive instincts surface and give way to this bestial face. Vegito explains. Gogeta says that he always thought that beast form was a manifestation of Gohan's fury. In the reality you come from, maybe it is, Vegito replies. But for the Gohan of this world, which is the Gohan I know, and was a progenitor of, that form is just the beginning. As his son releases an obscene amount of power at the same time as an animalistic fury, Vegito completes his speech. Now you will see Gohan's true power. Like a missile, Gohan projects his own body towards Vod in a swoop while leaving a trail of destruction in his path. Despite the shock, the angel is quick to respond, receiving Gohan with a punch while the hybrid Saiyan arrives in the same way. The collision of their fists generates an enormous impact, which destroys the entire ground around them. Despite having managed to stop Gohan's advance with his punch, Vod had to work hard to do so, which infuriates the angel. You damn mortal, don't think you're on par with me, the angel says in a loud voice, however stuttering, indicating his uncertainty in the face of the power he has just felt collide with his fist. At the same time, Gohan and Vod disappear. A fraction of a second later, a series of flashes and waves of impact take over the place, indicating the speed and strength with which the combatants move and attack. The energy generated by the collisions of their blows gives rise to powerful electric currents that spread around, while whirlwinds also spread. Before long, a large tornado forms, surrounded by powerful electric blasts that swirl around it. From the center of this tornado come multiple impact waves, rays of light, and bursts of energy, evidence of the fierce confrontation that takes place there. Vegito and Gogeta watch everything attentively, this last one very impressed by Gohan's power. It's incredible. This angel isn't holding back in this fight, but Gohan is still able to fight on equal terms with him. Gogeta watches. Then he asks Vegito what Gohan's training history is in this reality. Vegito says that since Gohan was very young, he trained his son to fight. And fortunately, unlike Bulla, Gohan developed a great passion for fighting. He trained hard until he became a patroller, and then trained even more to become the first patroller. Obviously, it's still a long way from happening, but I'm sure that one day this boy will surpass me. Vegito completes his speech, making his pride for his son evident in his tone. So this is the result when Gohan, in addition to having greater potential, also takes his training more seriously and lives to fight. Gogeta comments, also feeling very proud. Despite this, Gohan having no parental ties to him. Suddenly, that enormous tornado is undone thanks to a monstrous impact wave that is created in its center. The result of a colossal force blown that Gohan landed on Vod. This blow pushes him away with such surreal power that it causes Vod to alter the balance of space-time, while being displaced an absurd distance by his own dimension. Even with the angel moving at an overwhelming speed thanks to his blow, Gohan moves at an even greater speed, chasing his enemy in the form of a ray of light while preparing another, even more powerful blow. The speed with which they move makes them both for a few seconds break dimensional barriers and visit other dimensions parallel to that one. Gohan ends his pursuit of the angel with a punch containing an absurd amount of force that breaks the walls of the parallel dimensions, sending the two back to Vod's dimension. Vod is sent back to the ground of his particular dimension, opening a gigantic crater at the same time that an explosion of impact, energy, and dust is generated in a large region around it. Vod lies paralyzed on the floor, blood running profusely from his mouth and nose. At that moment, the evil angel has multiple internal injuries on his body, severely punished by the bestial Saiyan's attacks. How could I, an angel, reach this point because of a mere mortal? Vod says to himself, choking thanks to the blood that accumulates in his throat. In the form of a beam of light, Gohan lands next to him, destroying part of the ground in the process. He stares at the angel with a voracious gaze, thirsty for his blood. Curses! I, who have always trusted my strength and never liked resorting to magic, will need to use it now. What a humiliation! Vod, with great difficulty, manages to raise one of his arms, and then his staff magically appears in his hand. I will heal myself. And then, but suddenly, Gohan passes him in an instant, taking the staff from his hand. Vod despairs when his staff is taken away, but then despairs even more when the Saiyan simply throws it into the air and destroys it with an ultra-powerful energy shot. No! Vod screams completely desperate. Vegito and Gogeta appear next to him with a teleport. 
Vegeta gloats at his enemy. If from the beginning of the fight you had fought with the help of your magic, perhaps you would have defeated Gohan. But you couldn't stand the idea of not being able to subdue a simple mortal with your raw power, could you? It seemed like an affront to your pride to need to resort to magic tricks. After all, you are an angel and he is just a mortal boy. Vod is deeply irritated by Vegito's words. You idiot. What do you know about an angel's pride? Nothing, Vegito admits, but I know a little something about a Saiyan's pride. And I learned that our pride should never be despised. However, it also cannot hinder us in battle. The one who fights while blinded by their own pride is a warrior destined to fail. Gohan takes flight again, this time hovering above them while preparing a Kamehameha. It looks like the final blow is coming, Gogeta warns. Gogeta and Vegeta move away, and then the gigantic massive energy wave is fired at the angel who watches his death come with great despair. You damn! How dare you! I am an angel! Vod's last scream echoes across great distances, but is drowned out by the deafening sound of the energy blast that is created. The power of Gohan's Kamehameha spreads throughout the dimension at an absurd speed, destroying the walls of that reality and eliminating the entire dimension of Vod, as well as himself. They all reappear in the exact same place where Vod kidnapped Gohan to his dimension. Gogeta and Vegeta watch carefully the youngest Saiyan, whose great wild power suddenly disappears. After this, he falls unconscious, already in his base form. His key calmed down after the big energy discharge, Vegito says. Gogeta comments that Gohan fought much better than he expected, and the fact that he managed to defeat an angel is impressive. Vegito agrees, but reminds Gogeta that Vod seemed far from being among the strongest of the angels, and he was even considerably weaker than Wiss and Vados, who they faced before. Apparently, his strong personality kept Vod away from a more refined mastery of Ultra Instinct, and because of his pride, he seemed to avoid magic. In other words, this feat of Gohan's should not be repeated with the other angels. He compliments his reasoning. From now on, we will keep him under surveillance and also ensure that he becomes stronger. Gogeta asks how he intends to do this, and Vegito says he already has an idea. At the base of the evil angels, Vados walks thoughtfully through the corridors. She has just witnessed Vod's defeat and death, and it disturbs her. Suddenly, she comes face to face with another angel in the hallway. This angel, like her, has a feminine appearance, but unlike Vados, she does not dress in a mannered way, but in a way to sensually display her body. You seem a little distressed, sister, the angel notes with malice present in her voice. You're not feeling guilty about what happened, are you? Oh, what am I saying? Of course you're not. Vados gets a little irritated. Stop making insinuations and just say what you want to say, Rum, she asks impatiently. The angel called Rum does as Vados wants, speaking more directly. Do you think everyone here doesn't know that it was you who manipulated Vod into attacking that Saiyan? Between you and me, it was very mean of you to use our brother's crush on you to send him to his death. Don't talk nonsense, Rum. It was never my intention to send Vod to his death. I couldn't imagine that the Saiyan kid was so powerful and would kill him. Rum counters. Maybe not. But if you were completely sure of the safety of this plan, you would be the one attacking the boy. You only sent him because you feared for your life. I'm not going to listen to accusations from you, Vados exclaims, starting to get irritated. Besides, I've already found something better to do. And unlike you, who only knows how to complain, I'm trying to deal with the problem involving these Saiyans. Rum gets a little curious. Tell me, sister, do you have any plans in mind? She asks Vados. You will soon see, Vados says mysteriously, although the smile on her face confirms Rum's suspicion. Vados walks away, leaving his sister alone. After a very intense battle, Gohan manages to defeat Vod, one of the evil angels frustrating his and Vados' plan, who seem to have a second plan. What will Vegito do to keep Gohan safe and make him stronger? And what will be the next move of the evil angels? Find out in the next episodes of Dragon Ball Shinken.